So my name is Tom Serkenberg. Um, I'm currently working at the Munich Center for Mathematical Philosophy at the LMU Munich. And I got the Stegmüller Prize for my, uh, my work on universal prediction, which was my PhD thesis that I wrote both in Amsterdam at uh, uh, the Dutch National Research Center for Mathematics and Computer Science and the philosophy faculty in Groningen. So just think about, about prediction making, right? So just think about the weather, think about uh, betting in sports, just think about the stock market. Uh, these are all concrete everyday settings where we, uh, we make predictions. And we have several methods for making those predictions, right? So we have the methods of human experts that make forecasts, uh, but we also have more formalized methods, statistical methods we have algorithms uh, for generating predictions from, uh, from data, so several applied methods for, for prediction that apply in particular contexts. Now the philosophical question uh, is, could there not be, in theory at least, a single method for prediction? So a single method that in all of these contexts would be applicable and in some sense would be just as good as any of those applied, say, algorithms. So could there be something like what is what we then will call a universal prediction method? Uh, so my thesis is, is basically to show, uh, to give both philosophical and mathematical arguments to show that this is in fact an impossibility. It is not even in theory possible to uh, define something like a universal prediction method. My background, my original background is in, in logic, mathematical logic, and I wrote, a, I wrote a master's thesis on a very technical topic. It was called algorithmic randomness. And the original motivation was to, uh, to make precise what this extremely slippery concept of randomness of data, when is, a, when is a sequence of outcomes random? Can we give some kind of characterization of that? Uh, it's a very intriguing philosophical question. And that drove me to sort of take a step back again and try to uh, to go back into those kind of uh, foundational questions. The underlying idea I guess here is that, um, and this is an idea that uh, goes back to, to, to a rich philosophical tradition, um, it's basically the, the starting points of, uh, of traditional or analytic uh, philosophy of science. Um, which says that um, there is a best way, a most rational way of um, scientific reasoning, hence also of prediction. Um, given a, an amount of data, there is a most rational way of uh, reasoning from that data to conclusions. And importantly, this is supposed to be independent of the context to a large extent. You could describe this as a universal prediction method, right? If this were possible um, to give such an account of supremely rational um, inference of conclusions from data, and the second important step, if you would actually be able to make this precise, to maybe ideally even make this so precise that you could turn this into a prediction into an algorithm, then this would fulfill this grand goal of having a, a universal method for prediction. One important program that tried to fulfill this project of giving a rational account of scientific reasoning was a program that um, is mostly connected to the name of Rudolf Carnap. Um, and a program that attracted also a lot of, uh, of other important people in philosophy, in, uh, in, in philosophy of science, including Wolfgang Stegmüller, um, designing a logic uh, for inductive inference, a logic for deriving conclusions, uncertain conclusions. It is not deduction, it's in induction from data. And this program um, not only had a massive influence in philosophy, it also prompted a particular approach within machine learning and artificial intelligence. One overarching goal in my thesis was to connect these two parallel traditions, right? The philosophical tradition of inductive logic that um, 
influence later traditions like the whole uh, the, the currently very popular Bayesian approach in philosophy of science and this parallel development in machine learning that likewise uh, that in a lot of respects um, was similarly influenced right so also in machine learning the Bayesian method has become very uh, dominant. This this definition, computer science, is still advocated as actually giving such a definition, right? Whereas, if you look at the the parallel um, development within philosophy, the Carnap program was attacked by many people. The negative conclusion of my PhD thesis to the effect that it is impossible to it is in fact, impossible to uh, to define such a universal method of prediction is rooted in one uh, one such attack um, by the influential American philosopher Hilly Putnam. It wasn't merely philosophical uh, arguments he had to bring against um, Carnap's project. Putnam claimed that he actually had a mathematical argument that simply uh, showed, simply proved that uh, Karma's project was an impossible one. This is uh, Putnam's famous diagonal argument. It was to show the impossibility of a universal prediction method. Which, of course, then raises the question, how does this, re this relate to the, the proposed definition within computer science? This proposed definition within computer science also cannot escape uh, this diagonal proof. Whatever um, prediction methods one could ever design should actually be a prediction algorithm. It should actually be something that could be coded up, even if only in theory, and should be able, uh, even if only in theory, uh, to be implemented on a computer. So on a very intuitive level, that is how to understand a universal prediction method. When an, whenever any prediction algorithm uh, would be successful, would start drawing conclusions that actually match match the, the incoming data, then this universal prediction method and will do so too. Basically because it is somehow able to, um, to simulate the successful uh, prediction algorithm. So Putnam argues as follows. Suppose there were a universal prediction method. Now I'm going to generate data for you. Um, the way I'm doing that is, since your universal prediction method must be method two, uh, it has an algorithm, right? Well, if you have an algorithm, then I can run it. So this is now how, how I am going to generate my data. Um, I'm, f I'm just going to compute what you're going to predict. And I'm just going to generate data that falsifies that. And then I do that again and again and again. So I'm going to generate data on which your universe, supposedly universal prediction method would always fail. Note that this is, not, this is not yet a problem for your universal prediction method because you could say, well, it only has to be successful if some method is. And, but also note that the way I generated my data is super simple. I have an algorithm for it. What is my algorithm? I just run your algorithm and I do the other thing, right? So it's, a, it's, a, it's an extremely simple algorithm. I, I basically have defined by generating this data in such a way an alternative prediction method that would actually do, do perfect on this data, right? I can, I can also code up now in a prediction method that just knows what I'm going to do um, and will start predicting perfectly, fr will from start predict perfectly, whereas your supposed universal prediction method is just failing and failing and failing. Suppose there were such a thing as a universal prediction algorithm, then I can show that this algorithm is actually not universal. I think at this point it's important to take away the impression that this was actually something Carnap was after, right? It is pretty subtle what exactly he was after and what exactly um, he himself thought was the scope of his project, right? Because this is the same Carnap um, who did stress in many, in many places how uh, the context of inquiries is very important, which is very hard to square with this idea of a single method uh, to do it all. So I have to stress here that this was really Putnam's conception of Karma's program. And if you read uh, Carnap's uh, replies to Putnam, 
um, there was a lot of misunderstanding there. Uh, Carnap's conception of his program was, was definitely very different from, from Putnam's one. I'll just say that the, the argument in my thesis is basically of the same form, the same general form that a, a supposed uh, universal prediction method should satisfy two demands. It should itself, of course, be a method, um, and it should be universal in the sense that it's somehow just as good or not much worse, whatever the data, than any other uh, prediction method. And this more generalized um, uh, diagonal argument uh, basically shows that these two uh, demands are impossible to satisfy, no matter how you weaken or twist uh, this notion of computability, there's always a diagonal argument you can launch against uh, against universal prediction methods rooted in this uh, um, this notion. Now to parallel here to to the to the Gödel incompleteness theorem, which has gotten much more attention in uh, in the philosophy of mind, um, and something that is called Gödel's disjunction, um, a conclusion that many people have wanted to draw from Gödel's argument, uh, is that it shows that uh, human beings are somehow capable of doing more than formal systems. S since we human beings are able to, um, uh, to discover any mathematical truth or in particular we are able to see the truth of those sentences that are produced in the in the proof of the Gödel incompleteness theorem um, we can somehow do more than um, uh, than formal systems can but of course you could also take the the other side of the disjunction here and say that uh, we as human beings if we are a formal system um, Right? There are also certain truths that we will never be able to, um, uh, to see the truth of. Right? So this is so very, very roughly you could say that uh, Putnam's argument can be seen as an inductive variant of the, of the Gödel argument. Connects to this, this, this profound epistemological question uh, uh, what are the ultimate limitations of, of laying down uh, how one should in, uh, how one should induce conclusions from data? Right for every prediction method, every method of inference, there are circumstances where this method's assumptions um, are appropriate, but there are also circumstances where they aren't. There is no method um, whose assumptions whose one might say informally, uh, whose expectations about the shape the future data might take um, are appropriate in every um, setting. It basically tells us that any method we design in any concrete setting um, must be limited in the sense that it makes certain presuppositions, that it involves certain assumptions, which prompts us to, um, well, to make to ourselves and to anyone using that method, very clear what those assumptions actually are.